Welcome Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. First ever meeting between the University of South Florida and 17th ranked Auburn Tigers. 87,541 and every seat is full. This playing surface is natural grass. It's lightning fast just the way the Tigers like it. Tommy Tuberville is the head coach of the Tigers now in his ninth year. He's led the Tigers to six straight bowl games. On the other side of the field is the only coach the Bulls have ever had, and that's Jim Levitt. They finished fourth in the Big East last year when their first ever bowl game by beating East Carolina in the Papa John's dot com bowl 24 to 7. This is the largest on campus or the seventh largest on campus stadium in college football. Auburn won the toss and deferred. They want to get that defense on the field right out of the gates. That means Taurus Johnson will be back deep for the Bulls. Zach Kutch will kick it off for the Tigers. And this place is ready to explode. Tommy Tuberville is concerned about this new rule, too, kicking off from the 30. Jerome Murphy with the return out to the 35 yard line good return that's why Tuberville was concerned with the kickoff moving it back to the 30 going to get a lot more long returns Dan now we'll see in this first series whether South Florida goes with the no huddle that's what growth he likes he likes to get into a rhythm go no huddle although Jim Levitt was telling us he doesn't think they're going to do it because of the noise in here we'll see here in this series growth he needs some early success South Florida needs some early success and no negative plays and Jim Levitt feels the advantage the Bulls have is that man right there in the shotgun number eight Matt Grothy Benjamin Williams with a good carry on first down across midfield down to the 45 yard line for the Bulls South Florida offense is going to be introduced by senior offensive lineman Mr. Walter Walker USF offense is led by quarterback Matt Grothy a great all around character guy uh, he's a great arm. He's a great leader. Up front, we have the offensive line, the mean green machine. Here to grind him up all night. 19 yards on that gain by Ben Williams. Into Tiger territory on the first offensive play of the game. This is what we'll see a lot from South Florida. Looking over to the sidelines, coaches calling the plays and reading the defense for Matt Grothy. Williams. And that man, Quentin Groves, has got him, knocks his hat off. Loss on the play of about three. Well, offense of the defense for the Auburn Tigers. Keep your eye on that man, number 54, Quentin Groves. He's the sack master at linebacker. Trey Blackman's bad ankle is good to go. But at free safety, Eric Brock steps in for the injured Aaron Savage. Will Muschamp is the coordinator for the Tiger D, and he has to like that play. And they're going to be looking for 54 Groves all night. So Sinderic Marks on the other side should take advantage of that. Five wide receivers for Grothy on second and long. And he throws behind his receiver, Jesse Hester Jr. Incomplete. Now every play is reviewed. He says he caught the ball. So they're looking at it right now up in the booth. Now this is an SEC crew. Called an incompletion. See if his left hand gets under the ball. No, it bounced. It bounced. Third down for the Bulls. They were 7 of 15 on third down against Elon last week. Clock running down. Third and 13. Blitz coming. Grothy gets it off to Hester. And Hester gets wrapped up and taken down short of the 40 yard line. Jonathan Wilhite with a solid tackle there. He hesitated. He could have beaten him to the sideline and maybe made that cut to the sticks. But if you watch after the catch, he hesitates just a second. And Auburn defensively is so fast, you're not going to have them overrun the play. They come under control, they break down, they make the play. Will Height with a nice play. This is Delbert Alvarado, the place kicker, back in punt formation for Justin Tichy, the normal punter. 
Ball bounces, and it's going to be down on the one-yard line. Oh, what a great, great play by Trey Williams, showing that speed outside contain and getting down to the goal line to make that stop of the football before it went into the end zone for a touchback. Just watch how he runs right by the receiver. Here's 21, Trey Williams at the goal line. Outstanding special teams play. And a tough place for the Auburn Tigers to start their first possession, and this is an offense that has struggled recently. Especially the offensive line, Dan. They really had a trouble, had trouble stopping anybody last year. We'll keep an eye on King Dunlap, number 77, because he was one of the culprits at the top of your screen. That's Carl Stewart in motion. Quick pass out here to Preche Rodriguez, and he gets the ball with him, breathing room out to the seven-yard line. Auburn offense will be introduced by Tigers offense coordinator Al Borges. Our offense tonight will feature senior quarterback Brandon Cox, who has been here for a while. I think he signed in the same class as Bo Jackson. Also, our big left tackle, who King Dunlap, who blocks out the sun, and tonight will more likely block out the moon. Thank you, Al. A little stand-up comedy from the offensive coordinator. Here's Ben taken, tripped up in the backfield by number 95, George Selvey. The South Florida defense will be introduced by senior linebacker Ben Moffitt. USF defense led up front by George Selvey. Had four sacks last week. The linebackers are going to bring the speed all night. And the secondary is led by cornerback Trey William and Mike Jenkins. They'll lock you down all night. Better lock him down right here. This is third and long. Third down and six from the five-yard line. Three wide receivers. This is Cole Bennett in motion. And Cox is tripped and goes down at the one-yard line. Tripped over Jason Bosley as center. His left foot, as it pushed away, got caught under his foot. Watch his feet. Got them both caught under Bosley's feet as Bosley started the block right after the snap. Not a whole lot of room for the punter for the Tigers. This is Ryan Shoemaker. Boy, South Florida's fast too, Dan. They may be coming. They got nine men coming. Shoemaker gets it out, and it's a good punt out to midfield. This is Trey Williams at the 45-yard line. Marcus Edwards, rather, and he goes out of bounds and gives the Bulls good field position one more time. First down for the Bulls at the 29-yard line. Option play. Ford across the 30. He's got a lane inside the 20, inside the 15, and out of bounds. And there's a flag down. What a block on the corner by Marcus Edwards. There's no flag on the play. It was unbalanced slide. We had seven men on the line of scrimmage. No flag. First down. That's good officiating. Very good. They got together and said, hey, on the other side, they did have enough men on the line of scrimmage. 20 yards on the gain. Watch this block to the right of your screen by number 11. Bam! Just laid him on the earth. He got two of them. Came after Quentin as well. And big Mark Dial got out in front, too. That's a good sign for the Bulls. He wasn't feeling too well yesterday. First and goal. Ford right side. Bouncing off tacklers inside the five, dragging tacklers to the one. You know what's amazing? You talk about a good sign. Marcus Edwards is out there throwing blocks. He leveled one guy and chipped at the other. And Edwards is only 5'11", 164 pounds. When you get receivers blocking like that, it opens up everything. Now watch the line. Zone blocking. They go down. Ford goes outside. Now Ford is the... The recruit that everybody's talking about is a true freshman, but he did go to Hargrave Military Academy, went to junior college, was recruited here at Auburn and Alabama. Scored on the ground twice, caught one in the end zone for three. Here he is here. No, it's Grothy on the fake, and Grothy to the goal line. Touchdown, South Florida. Look out. South Florida won at the early score. The success build the confidence, quiet the crowd, and they've got it. Happy birthday, Matt Grothy, turning 21 today. Look at this. The Bulls traveled pretty well. Look at all the green jerseys in the stands. 
Gilbert Alvarado, who was perfect last week, four for four. Remember, going back to his punt that was down by Trey Williams, that really set up the Bull offense in great field position. And Alvarado was perfect. The last two years, South Florida has won some big, big ball games, Dan. They went down, they beat Louisville. Last year, they went up to Morgantown, they took on number seven, West Virginia, and beat the Mountaineers. They come rolling in here 1 0 in front of a huge crowd, the ninth largest stadium in the United States of America, and they say, We're better than they are. That's a little swagger in your step. Matt Grothy leading that touchdown drive. His highlights, as I said earlier, became a huge hit on YouTube last year. He became almost a cult figure, led USF over West Virginia. And Grothy, he was recognized really almost as a luminary down in Florida. But he did have 14 interceptions last year, and that's what he says he needs to correct to get to the next level. And those 14, of those 14, four of them were in the red zone. Right. And those are absolute killers because you come away, obviously, with zero points. You speak like you've been there. <laughs> <laughs> been there, done that, unfortunately. Too not, many times. Not many times, folks. Dan Fouts is a Hall of Famer, as you know. Yeah. Despite 242 interceptions. You gotta stop. You're giving way too much information. <laughs> Patrick Lee back deep for the Tigers to kick off for the Bulls is Justin Tichi again from the 30 yard line and he drills it. Two yards deep. This is Mario Fannin left side big hole 30 35 and out of bounds 36 yard line. Mario Fannin with his first touch of the 2007 season. Mario Fannin is the tailback behind Carl Stewart. And he gets the ball left side. Breaking tackles across midfield. First carry for Mario Fannin. Fannin got four on first down. Cox throws and a fine catch by Rod Smith. Was he inbounds? Yes, he was. Right in front of Trey Williams, came back, drove him off, and then came back for the football and stayed in bounds. This is well thrown. Good fake. Cox steps up. How about this? Smith comes back for the ball and stayed in bounds. Working on a good corner over there. Trey Williams will play on Sundays. Number 21 just gave too much of a cushion. Move it back five, first down, 15 now. Fannin, left side. And the Bulls wrap him up there, but he still picks up two or three. Fannin got two. 32 yard line now for the second down and 13. Fake to Fannin. Cox with time to throw down the sideline, double covered, and almost intercepted. Coming over is Trey Williams, trying to get the ball to Carl Stewart on the wheel route, but Williams would have none of it. Trey Williams already in the first quarter has made his presence known. He's playing a heck of a football game. If you watch him, number 21 will come in late. There he is. Goes up and almost makes the interception. He's out of bounds. He decided to pass up the lure of the NFL to stay in school and come back. He and Jenkins both have the talent to play in the NFL. I'm not sure what Cox was seeing there. Tyrone McKenzie had great coverage on Stewart. With the safety over the top. Four wide receivers for Cox on third and 13. Time to throw and almost intercepted again. Jerome Murphy. If he picks that off, Timmy, it's goodbye. We talked about it at the beginning of the game, Dan. This secondary is definitely the strength of this defense. And they all have speed. They're in a two deep five under. And Murphy just breaks on the ball and almost has the pick. Bats it away. So that'll bring on West Byram, true freshman from Fort Lauderdale. He's three for four last week in his debut against Kansas State. This one will test his distance. He missed from 47 last week. Keep in mind, he replaced John Vaughn, who was a finalist for the Luke Groza Award, Auburn's all time leading scorer. He's got big shoes to fill. 49 yard attempt. It's straight. It's true. And the shoe fits. Sprained ankle and all.
419 to go, first period. Auburn's on the board thanks to this West Byram 49 yard field goal. I want to thank Tommy Tuberville for letting us eavesdrop in the Tiger locker room. You're getting fired up, didn't you, Timmy? Yeah, no question. I like him a lot. You know, Auburn has won 34 games over the last three seasons under Tommy Tuberville. That's four more than Florida, two more than LSU, and three more than Ohio State. Tommy Tuberville does a heck of a job. And his team is on the board. Zach Kutch will kick it off. This will go to Jerome Murphy. And he's got a good return going out to the 25. Struggling across the 30 yard line. Another fine return by Jerome Murphy. 31 yard line for the Bulls. Here's Mike Ford bouncing to the outside. First down, Bulls out of bounds. Eric Brock knocks him out there, but this guy is a load. 13 yards. He's a terrific story, too. We, we br briefly told you about 26. He was recruited by Alabama, recruited by Auburn. They wanted him here. He almost signed at Alabama, but was a non-qualifier academically. But he went to Hargrave Military Academy. Then he went to Juco. He's worked his way back up. Here he is. He's got four carries, 39 yards tonight, and he's getting the attention of everybody. Grothy fakes to him. And throws the ball, and it's almost intercepted by Eric Brock. Remember, Brock is filling in for Aaron Savage, who injured his ankle last week against K-State. Brock doing a good job. And we'll keep an eye on that, too, because second Aaron down. Savage, who's out with that angle injury, he's the quarterback of the secondary. He makes all the calls. He gets them lined up, calls the in and outs. And Auburn likes to use a lot of cover one man with a robber, so we'll see if he makes all the calls here. Brock doing a good job so far. He's looking for the signal from the sidelines. Here's Ford, right side for a couple. Bulls chilling on the sidelines. This is just a beautiful night here on the Plains. Big third down now for the floor, South Florida Bulls. That's impressive, huh? Against this defense, you bet it is. Row three to Johnson. One-handed catch by Torres Johnson. Are you Whoa, me? what a catch. Are you kidding me? Right between Powers and Brock. Torres Johnson, their leading receiver. When you ask the coaches about him, they just say he's a playmaker. Well, I guarantee you, look at this. Like he's making a baseball catch in deep center field. There's Brock 33 and Powers. But you don't get any better than this. That's sports center material right there. Yeah, on third and eight, they pick up 23. Here's Grothy with a fake. Cuts back inside the 20, 15, 10. Grothy down inside the five-yard line. He juked Zach Etheridge. What a move by those quick feet for 27 yards. And watch the read. There's the fake. Now look at this. As you look at that here, look at all the running room he's got. He sees it. He goes. And then this is a stop on the dime. Give you nine cents change and see you later. Takes it all the way down inside the 10. Matt Grothy is really talented. Led the team in rushing last year. They've gained 50 yards in the last two plays. Here's Grothy. And the ball is complete to Ben Busby, but it's thrown low, and Busby has to go down, secure the catch, and cannot get into the end zone. He was wide open. Matt Grothy was a little bit winded on that play. You could tell he's still sucking air. See him breathing hard, see the shoulders going up and down like a fighter late in the rounds. He had to reload that pass. Most of the time, if you reload, you're in trouble. Ball marked just inside the two-yard line. Three running backs. This is Mike Ford right side. And Ford is in the end zone. Touchdown, Bulls. Wow. That was an impressive drive by South Florida. 
ball highlighted by Doris Johnson's catch. And Grothy's run. Delbert Alvarado adds the 14th point. 69 yards and seven plays. Mike Ford, this is no Edsel. Bull fans whooping it up here at Auburn. On top by 11 as we near the end of the first quarter. Jim Levitt's got to be thrilled with this start. Here's Alvarado's kick. And this is Patrick Lee at about the 11. And Lee just uh, refuses to go down or out of bounds. Gets all the way across the 35-yard line. South Florida's a great story. Look at this. Football team was approved by the school back in 1995. Jim Levitt was hired as the head coach. He was washing all the uniforms at the time. 1996, they had the first football practice. 97 first game 80 to 3 win over Kentucky Westland 2005 the first Big East game played and then last year they went to their first bowl game and won that 24 to 7 over East Carolina so I mean this is just a great remarkable story of tenacity and how about Jim Levitt watch the uniforms great story there's Cox outside to Chris Slaughter and a late flag and be roughing the passer and it appears that it was uh, Robert Kleber uh, Kleber too is having some words afterwards I think he's apologizing actually McKenzie was the 127 that hurt him in the back hit personal him in the back. foul roughing the passer number 76 on the defense 15 yards from the end of the line first and 10 and they get Kleber right out of the ball game too and he really wasn't all that guilty, was he? It was a good, clean shot by McKenzie. Just pushed him into Kleber. Here's Fannin right side. Knocking over his own man across the 40-yard line. Get out of my way, Antoine Daniels, number 70. Daniels is 287 pounds, and Fannin just threw him out of the way. And Daniels is hurt. He's dragging that left arm. Six foot five, 287 pound junior from Forsyth, Georgia. Fannin's 219, and he had the momentum, but. Right now, he's wearing a lampshade, and it's a dim light. <laughs> Been there, huh? Yes, I have. <laughs> Tonight, for instance. <laughs> a game of seven on that play. Fannin, again, in the eye back behind Stewart. He's got it right side again. He's got the first down now. Mario Fannin showing the promise that these fans have been looking for. Here's Rodriguez in motion. Give to Fannin, and he's hit in the backfield by Tyrone McKenzie. You know, Tyrone McKenzie right there, 27, started at Michigan State. Then we saw him at Iowa State last year. He transferred, and he's playing here this year. Got an NCAA waiver because of uh, his mom, but that's a big-time play as the quarter ends. And uh, McKenzie, the leading tackler for the Bulls. Second and real long for Brandon Cox. Rodriguez is in motion. Cox setting up a screen. Stewart. First down, Auburn. Stewart all the way inside the 10 yard line. King Dunlap with a huge block. King Dunlap's playing well, but everybody's playing well. If you play Auburn, you better get ready for Al Borges, the offensive coordinator, and his screens. Look at the offensive lineman get out in front. Look at King Dunlap kick out on Williams. That's terrific balance, too, when you talk about a running back, Stewart, who's 230 pounds. That was perfectly set up, perfectly designed, and perfectly executed. 30 yards down to the 8-yard line. Here's Fannin with a full speed ahead across the 5. We're seeing a couple of exciting young running backs. For Auburn, it's Mario Fannin, Mike Ford for South Florida. Not really showing us that they're freshmen, are they? Well, Carl Stewart had him after that screen pass and what he did. He's now at fullback. 
Second and goal. Fannin. Touchdown, Auburn. Mario Fannin. Loaded up, elephant formation. Carl Stewart moved over to the fullback spot in front of Fannin, led him up there, and Fannin just made a good cut, strong move to the goal line. Both those freshmen have scored touchdowns tonight. Wes Byram will come on, try to give the Tigers their tenth point, and he does. Downhill running for the Auburn Tigers. Kind of familiar, isn't it? Mario Fannin gets it in the end zone. 14-10 South Florida. On the sidelines, Mario Fannin, the freshman. Impressive scoring drive there for Auburn. Fannin, the redshirt freshman. They say he's the next great running back at Auburn, and he sure looked like it on that drive. But more importantly, that offensive line is blocking. This is a run-oriented football team. They were unable to get the running game going last week against K-State. That was Tommy Tuberville's goal coming in. The offensive line is performing. Fannin is performing. This team looks solid right now. But they still trail South Florida. Zach Kutch, number one, will kick it off. Jerome Murphy and Torres Johnson deep for the Bulls. And he pooches it to the front line. It's going to hit the ground in front of Murphy. Johnson, rather, across the 30, 35 yard line. Heck of a play by Taurus Johnson. Picking that ball up on one hop. First and 15 for Grothy. Quick screen outside to Taurus Johnson. And a fine tackle there by Eric Brock. Brock came in a hurry, too. As soon as he read it, he broke on the football and chased him down from behind. And Johnson's fast. So this is a lot for Brock to catch him, but there's 33, and he lays out. Oh, he, he doesn't want Johnson to get ahead of steam. It looked like he almost popped the ball loose out of Johnson's yeah. hand. Second and 14. Again, three wide receivers. Grothy in trouble. Real trouble. More trouble. Down he goes inside the four. Antonio Coleman, number 52, with the tackle. Now let's check in with Stan Verrett. Stan? Comes in with five defensive backs. Grothy lost 12 on that play. And he'll give it to Benjamin Williams. Concession call there to give the punter a little bit of room on fourth down coming up. Well, they don't want to make a mistake. They don't want to give anything easy to Auburn. And so they were very conservative through their play calling. But this defense now for Auburn is starting to feel its oats. I think they've really found their groove. Will Muschamp, the defensive coordinator, is playing two deep, five under. So they're taking some of that speed away from South Florida. Again, Delbert Alvarado will be nine yards deep in his own end zone to punt this ball away to Robert Dunn, who's standing at the 45-yard line. Again, they spread him out. And this is a bomb by Alvarado. Backs up Dunn inside the 40. He's got a wall and a big block. Dunn. Inside the 40. War Eagle on that block. 24 yards on the return after the 54-yard bomb by Alvarado. You've heard that term, slobber knocker, top of your screen. Bam! Tuck that tail, sky your eyes, and I'm telling you, Andrew Ketchell doesn't know who hit him. McFadden hit him. Number six, where is he? Take another look. How about that block? No fillings left on that hit. First and ten again. Great field position for Auburn. This is Fannin. And the Bulls wrap him up after a short game. 
Cox on a play fake gets it outside. Montez Billings with his first catch of the season. This has been a very up tempo intense first half and lost in it all is the fact that USF is still leading Auburn here at home 14 to 10. Auburn missed a golden opportunity last time they had the ball with the interception in the end zone. Gain of six that time for Fannin. Cox to throw. To Dunn. Incomplete. Almost intercepted. Fine play by Jerome Murphy. Got a hand on it before the ball got to the receiver. And then a great play by Trey Williams. The ball was still in the air and he knocked him away from the football. Oh, these are some very quick defensive backs for both these teams. What a play by Murphy here. Okay, there's Murph. There's the touch. And see, the ball was still up for grabs, and a nice play by Williams just to knock him away and knock him out of bounds. Watch Murphy first, gets a hand on it. Very athletic. Now watch 21, just knock him away, take any chance of catching that football out of play. Now well, with 2.34 to go in the half, this is a fourth down attempt. Fourth and four for the Tigers. Fannin in the backfield with Cox. Cox to throw. And he's got done. First down, Auburn. So how'd I do? <laughs> I'm, I'm expecting the run because Cox is so out of sorts. But Borges very wisely gives him a high percentage out pattern, which is one of the safest plays you can throw. You get out of all that congestion in the middle. You throw out where you can see the coverage, and he hits done, and, and they he, move the chains. And he threw in rhythm. Got back quickly. Got the ball on target. First down, Auburn. Good job by Al Borges, the offensive coordinator. Cox throwing too high for Mario Fannin on the screen pass. Here's Fannin wide side blockers in front. First down Auburn Fannin inside the five all the way to the two yard line. Robert Dunn with a key block on the perimeter. These guys are all coming this way to block. Now watch what happens. They all block down, counter Trey, get the offensive lineman out there, and Fannin is a load. Actually out round his blockers, but broke the tackle down inside the five. Fannin in the eye back position behind Stewart. He gets it left side, and he's met right in the hole. Bruce Mom Premier with a big hit there, number 53. Don't want to canonize Fannin yet, but what a debut. Auburn's had some great running backs, Bo Jackson, Cornell Williams, and Rudy Johnson, Joe Cribbs. Go all the way back to Stephen Davis and Kenny Irons, but I'll tell you something. They say this guy is as good as any of them, and he's having a great night here. Remember, Brad Lester has been suspended for academic reasons. Fannin will take a blow on the sidelines. Ben Tate in now at the tailback spot. Fake to Tate. Flag down to the end zone. Wide open is Gabe McKenzie. Touchdown. But let's check out the flag. Auburn appeared. Offsides on the 95 of George Selby. Touchdown. Offsides. Touchdown, Auburn. Another good call by Al Borges. Let the South Florida defense run its way out and threw back behind it. Well, when you're running the ball as well as Auburn is running the ball, the play action is just a killer for the defense. This is Wes Byram. And he increases the first lead of the game for the Auburn Tigers. Jim Levitt encouraging his troops. And the Auburn fans have something to cheer about as they go to halftime. Todd Harris is with Coach Tuberville. Todd? Thank you, Dan. Coach, after a slow offensive start in the first quarter, you really got things going in the second quarter. What was the difference? Well, the first thing, our defense started getting us the ball back. We didn't tackle very well on defense, and obviously we didn't make any first downs. But, uh, you know, Mario Fanta made a difference for us, running him up inside. It kind of opened up the outside. They were having to leave their linebackers inside. We'll, we'll be fine. We'll probably go out and throw the ball a little bit more the second half. They're going to jam the middle up. Your assessment of your quarterback and your offensive line this week as opposed to last week? Oh, we've gotten a lot better, moving the ball a little bit more consistent, playing a little bit better on third down. But uh, 
Yeah, we're still not hitting on all cylinders. Thanks for your time, Thank Coach. You. Dan? All right, thanks, Todd. Thank you, Coach. Our halftime score, South Florida trailing by three, 17-14, the 17th-ranked Auburn Tigers on top. Dan Fouts and Tim Brand up in the booth. Todd Harris down the sidelines. Kind of a tale of two quarters, Tim. That first quarter ended with South Florida on top 14-3, but it was all the Tigers in that second quarter. Yeah, the Tigers got their running game. Of course, that was Mario Fannin. It was one of those situations where the linebackers were jamming the box, and he was now hitting the quarter. Look at him. He's 220 pounds. They talk about how great he will be, and tonight he's starting to give you some indication how talented he is, but that really changed things in this ballgame. The defense started causing havoc. It held South Florida to 15 second quarter uh, yards and that was it. See the two Mike Ford and Mario Fannin Ford 59 yards most of that in the first quarter and Fannin 53 yards most of that came in the second so it's really been a tale of two quarters here at Auburn. And Mario Fannin will get double duty as he's back deep for the Tigers. This kickoff is a short one. Tommy Trotz got it for the Tigers and he's out to just about the 34 yard line. So again good field position to start the second half now for the Tigers. And if you look at the halftime statistics you can see the balance 106 yards rushing for South Florida 107 for Auburn. One of the things that's not in there Dan is the fact that Auburn went for it on fourth down and got it and that led to a score and that led to them leading here 17 14 and that wasn't any old fourth down it was fourth down and four they threw for it got the first down with a pass from Cox to Robert Dunn this is Ben Tate right side and he gets blasted middle linebacker Ben Moffitt with a big hit Dodd what did coach Levitt have to say at halftime well, surprisingly, Dan, he wasn't that upset. I said, Coach, what changes do you have to make in the second half to be victorious here at Auburn? He said, the bottom line is we have to tackle better. That's it. We tackle better. We'll take everything else. He would like to see the offense move the chains a little better. He said, we don't have to get it all back in one big shot. Let's just move the chains, grind it out, play bowl football. He said, we'll be just fine. Thank you, Todd. Obviously, Ben Moffitt got the message at halftime after that tackle. Pickup of one for Tate. Fake by Cox. Throws a low for Rodriguez. Incomplete. Mike Jenkins takes Rodriguez all the way to the sidelines. Dan, because of the success of Mario Fannin in that first half, now South Florida starting to jam the box, put eight and nine guys in the box to stop the run. So it's going to be up to Cox to start passing and pass effectively. You see it there. They went to the pass on second down. Now they've got to go back to a pass. You would think on third down they could still run a draw. But I'd be looking for a screen or something on the outside. Well, Al Borges loves screen passes. This is third down and nine. Again, 0 for 6 in that first half on third down for Cox and the Tigers. Here's that screen you wanted, Tim. To Stewart. Got blockers out in front. And he's got a first down for Auburn across the 45-yard line. Bingo, huh? Yeah, and, and if you're playing defense, they've got to be thinking like I was. You've got to be expecting that screen. That is a big part of their repertoire at Auburn. And it's a high percentage play for Cox. Cox hadn't really been in a rhythm. So now you've got to get out of there. You've got to know the screen's coming. Get out there right now and get through there and break this thing up. Instead, they're slow getting over, and they move the chains. Tyrone Green, the junior left guard out in front with a key block. Ben Tate the tailback Cox straight back to pass he's got pressure down the middle into coverage knocked away incomplete double coverage again Mike Jenkins and Nate Allen Nate he, Allen thought he had the interception he was looking at it all the way and he was looking for a return that ball was batted away at the last second I'm not sure if it was Swinton but watch this at the very end here's Cox and again doesn't step into it he's almost ducking away from the hit when he throws it. And I watch how the ball's batted away at the very last second. And Allen thought, number five, he had the pick. That's just another poor decision by Cox. Swinton was double covered down the middle. Here's Tate trying the left side now. And he's met by Bruce Malm Premier. Thought it was interesting at halftime when Tommy Tuberville says, listen, we are not hitting on all cylinders yet, meaning not last week, not this week, yet. And Al Borges, when we talked to him, he says, you know, we just don't have the guys going 
like they did two years ago when they had Cadillac running the football and Jason Campbell at quarterback and the team that went 13 and 0 in 2004. They are not to that point here at Auburn. Now the third down and long for Cox. Four wide receivers in the game three at the top of the screen. Tate the remaining back to the right of Cox. Steps up. Now he's going to run. And he's going to come up just about a yard shy of that first down as he dives to the 45 yard line. That's encouraging to me. You've got a quarterback that's ducking every time he's thrown, and he showed us the big bruise on his left shoulder and left arm. But a guy that will tuck it away and run and actually take a hit at the end of this thing, that's pretty gutsy. Cox tucks it, looks one last time, and now he's going to run it and knows he's going to get hit and pound it into the ground. Although he does make sure he comes down on that right shoulder. He's real close to the first down. You look at that uh, yellow line there, but he's going to come up about that That's much short. shy. But you know what? I would put young Mario Fannin in the ball game here and go for it. Yeah, let him load the box. Let this kid, Mario Fannin, give him a pretty good dose of here we come. I'd come out and I'd say, hey, look, the rules of the game now, now are straight ahead, no fair dodge, and we're giving it to Fannin. But Danny. Fannin's not in there now, it's Tate. And Danny Perry is the fullback in front of Tate. Quarterback sneak fumble. And it's recovered by Nate Allen. Huge turnover for the Bulls as Brandon Cox fumbles on the quarterback sneak. Wow. His second turnover, he threw the pick early. Now this one gets away from him. You never see a fumble on a quarterback sneak that ball pops up in the air like this. Well, he's got it here, but he actually rubbed it up against Bosley's butt. He got the ball cut off his derriere, and the ball just went up in the air. He had the snap in his hands, and when he tucked it away, he came up off the center, and the ball hit him. I don't need, think he needed to leap either with that big offensive line just pushing for that six inches. But it's USF ball at the 41. Here's Grothy. And he doesn't get much. And he paid for that one yard at two yards. <laughs> Boy, didn't he? Craig Stevens, number 46, with another big hit. They have held Grothy in check tonight. South Florida stays pretty much in a no huddle. They're at the line of scrimmage. Then they'll go up to the line. Now, Grothy will read the defense. And then after he reads it, he's looking over because they're reading it at the box, too. And they run right inside Groves as he's rushing up the field, taken out of the play by Walter Walker. He's getting a little heavy legged. This is a running back that lets his eyes move his feet, reads the holes well, usually explodes through them. But just his body language, there's, there's a little fatigue right now. They're going to try to spread this defense thin. USF just three of nine on third down conversions. Third down and three. Three wides. A lot of threes. Ford wrapped up by Groves. Short of the first down. Both Groves and Coleman in on that tackle. And Ford slow getting up. I'm surprised they went back to him and didn't try to get Grothy to throw for the first. Boy, Groves is coming off with a limp again. He may have cramps. It's hot. Guys are struggling. Delbert Alvarado will try to pin the Tigers deep in their own end of the field here with this punt. And it's a beautiful high tail dragging spiral. Fair catch by Dunn made inside the 10 yard line. Great punt by Delbert Alvarado. Let's go back and look at number 54 for Auburn Quinton Rose. See if we can see what's happening. Here he comes in with the tackle. Gets a good lick. Ford's pretty big. He's riding him. He's got to wrestle him to the ground. This is strength versus strength. Keep an eye on the legs there of Groves. Didn't see him get hit. Maybe just cramping up. He had to use a lot of muscles. And look at him. He's saying, that guy is big. That guy is strong. <laughs> I, had to, I had a tough time getting him down. Rope that doggy. He had a tough time getting Josh Freeman, the huge K-State quarterback, down last weekend. Saying he's forward tough. Here's Fannin, left side. Good cut. Fumble. Florida's got it. Tyler Roberts picks up the loose ball. 
third turnover of the night, and this one is a killer deep in the Tiger territory. What a game that Nate Allen is playing, number five. Watch him come up. There's the tackle. Right arm strips the ball. Just punched it right out of there. That is really nicely done by the free safety. Number five. See the right arm? The right hand pushes it out. Just took him inside out, kept his leverage, stripped him. Roberts comes up with it. That is huge. Nate Allen punching that ball loose. The sophomore from Cape Coral, Florida. Now it's up to Matt Grothy. You look at the turnovers, Auburn's got three of them. But now Grothy has to turn these into points. Mike Ford is flanked all the way at the bottom of the screen. Grothy by himself in the shotgun. Throws to the left side. He's got Hester. And Hester's got the ball at the 20-yard line, out of bounds. That's not a bad formation to stay in if you're South Florida. Five wide receivers, ace backfield. You spread the defense thin. And it takes some of the pressure off Grothy. Now you, you really spread the defense thin because you've got a corner now having to guard Ford all the way out, split wide to the right as he is one more time. He's that number five that Tim's showing you. Second down and seven. Grothy again, left side in trouble. Down he goes. Antoine Carter with the sack. Number 45. But again, Tim, it's Grothy hanging onto the ball when he should just dump it away. Seen that several times tonight. And they're only rushing four. They back the linebacker out. Third and 18 now. Groves and Coleman back in the game. Swing pass out here to Ford. He's got some room. And he punishes tacklers as he goes out of bounds. But again, Mike McNeil takes the big shot from Ford. And Dan, with that run, they put themselves back in field goal position <laughs> to tie the game. But now you say, wait a minute, he's missed two so badly to the left. I'm not sure what field goal range is anymore for Delbert. Got a big leg. We talked about that 56-yarder against Syracuse last year, but his last two misses have been awful. Confidence can't be very high. Anthony Severino sets it down from 37 yards away. Block. Oh, he took an eternity to kick that ball. That's a lack of confidence. He didn't want to move on the ball. He didn't trust himself when the ball was snapped. This crowd is bipolar. One minute they're cheering and then they're down in the dumps. They're cheering now. Four turnovers. Zero points for the USF Bulls. Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. Rocking and rolling tonight. Fourth quarter starting here. Auburn on top by three. And they've got the ball. This is Ben Tate left side. And Tate gets forward for about three. You have to wonder when the opportunities are going to cease for South Florida. Auburn had three fumbles in the third quarter. South Florida started on the 41, the 21, and the 23, and they missed all three field goals. Here's what we're talking about. Four takeaways, no points, three missed field goals, one block, five penalties. South Florida should be leading this football game. Here's Tate right side. And a fine play out of the secondary. Ball came loose, but it's ruled down by our line judge, Terry Walters. Mike Jenkins with a fine tackle from the corner position. Dan, the most impressive thing to me tonight have been the corners for South Florida. Mike Jenkins and Trey Williams will both play in the NFL. I don't think there is any question about that. Both guys have great speed. They've got strength. They break on the football. They make tackles. They make interceptions. I mean, terrifically smart, talented players. And both are seniors, so enjoy them while you got them, Bulls fans. Oh, third down and 20 now for Cox. He runs out and down he goes. That is George Selvey, and that's his fifth sack of the season first tonight. George Selvey was very patient there because Cox was running out of patience. 
He looked, he looked, he looked, he felt the pressure and bailed out, and Selby was waiting for him. Jim Levitt saying, all right, fellas, think, be smart here. We're going to get good field position. Watch number 95. He's going to be at the right of your screen. He's buying time, buying time. There's Cox. Here he comes. Bam. Patrick Tatum in the game to punt it away for the Tigers. This is Mario Edwards tracking it down at about the 31. Makes one miss and it gets knocked out of bounds at the 35 yard line. Fine punt by Tatum of 40 yards, four yards on the return by Edwards. 11 21 to go in the ball game. Auburn 17, South Florida 14. You're watching ESPN's College Football Primetime. Back at Jordan Hare Stadium where the Tigers are on top by three. USF has the ball first down and 10 from the 35 yard line. Grothy escapes. Now he throws. He's got his man over the middle. That's Taurus Johnson and that's close to and it is a first down for South Florida. That is where Grothy is so dangerous. As soon as he pulled that ball down and started to run the defense then left their receivers. And once he got close to the line of scrimmage he let it go. That's Doug Flutie esque. Watch this five receivers definitely a pass play. Now he pulls it down starts to run guys get away they get out of their hook zones and he throws in the soft area. They're down in 13 for Grothy. Here's the pressure. There's the throw over the middle Hester's got it first down floor South Florida and a flag is down late. This could be a personal foul on the hit or a face mask. Boy, Grothy could not have waited any longer, and he knew he was going to take the hit. That's a big time throw and a big time catch. Yeah, the coaches call him a gamer. Kids today would call him a baller. Incidental face mask. Number 26 on the defense. Five yard penalty from the end of the run. It'll be first and 10. True freshman Mike McNeil with the incidental face mask grab. Groves and Marks are coming off the end and watch Groves. He's got a perfect shot at him and takes him down. Grothy waited to the very last second to throw that baby. Best throw of the night for Matt Grothy. Here's Ford right side. Pat Sims jumps on his back there. You know it's been a while since we saw Ford. They gave him a pretty good breather. Tried to get those legs going again. See if he could lighten those legs. And right now he feels like he's wearing cement shoes. Grothy's got it right side and he's close to a first down knocked out of bounds by Eric Brock but Grothy showing his toughness taking on the DB. He didn't hesitate either. He reacted quickly as soon as he read it he committed and he ran and he got the first down. He looks fakes tucks and goes. Now he sees that it's Brock it's one on one and he lowers his shoulder and gets up near that first down marker and they move the chains. That's a running back who plays quarterback. You're right. That type of mentality. He better keep moving too because they can't hit field goals. First and 10 on the 25. This is Ford right up the middle. And what Levitt's thinking right now is that with Ford's size at 225 that he's going to wear down this Auburn defense and maybe break a big one. But well, you're right Tim. They're in field goal range now and that may be bad news for South Florida. Well Auburn had three fumbles in that third quarter. South Florida started on 41 they're 21 in the 23 and they missed all three field goals and they weren't even close and there's Delbert Alvarado right now his confidence level is just like the number of field goals he's hit zero. Four wide receivers on this second down and eight for Grothy. Groves misses him. And Grothy crosses the line of scrimmage and then goes out of bounds. But Quentin Groves, he can't believe he didn't make that sack. I want to go back to Delbert Alvarado. You know, we're talking about their field goal kicker. Just watch his movements. This one way left. All right now the next one he gets another shot. It is farther left. That's almost over by the tunnel. And then he's afraid to approach the ball. His confidence slows him down and he gets it blocked. And he gets it blocked by a guy who's 6'1, 290. Send Derek Marks. Not exactly a skywalker. Third and six for Grothy from the 21. Over the middle, knocked down. And Derek Marks one more time getting a hand up. Boy, I want to tell you something too. 
Groves tattooed Grothy. He came off that corner and put his eyes on that number eight and throws him down on that left shoulder. I'm surprised they're not going for it, to be honest with you. He's good because he plays with bad intentions. 38 yard intended field goal here for Delbert Alvarado. And he's got it. How about that? That's bouncing back, Delbert. Good job. Look at Jim Lovett. Perseverance, baby. Stay after it. He's saying, you may win this game for us yet. And he says, wow. He can't believe it. Those are the first points in a long time. Kicking in rhythm. Delbert Alvarado ties this game. You're watching ESPN's College Football Primetime. Here's Tichi <laughs> kicking off. <laughs> That's Ben Tate. And Tate goes down the sidelines and is cartwheeled out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Cox now just has to manage the game. You see him reading. You see him making his reads, locating the safeties. Dunn in motion, and Dunn gets it on the reverse. Good block by Carl Stewart. And Dunn gets out of bounds after a good game. A little trickery for the Tigers. Al Borges, the offensive coordinator, looking on. Play is related to Cox. He's got that. Now he goes in. He looks at the play clock. Got plenty of time, 20 seconds. Dunn picked up six on the end around. They actually want to melt some of that clock, not give South Florida much if they get it back. Straight back to pass is Cox. Throws to the outside. He's got Dunn. Dunn's got a first down, and Dunn gets out of bounds. In front of Trey Williams. First and ten for Brandon Cox. He's going to throw again. He's got his tight end. Gabe McKenzie, another Auburn first down. Split the two deep with the tight end right down the middle. Gabe McKenzie. And again, you're starting to count the revolutions on Cox throws. He's got that tight spiral. And again, he throws on time and in rhythm. He's looking at the safety there, number five, Allen. He sees him. Goes the other side of McKenzie. Throws a nice pass where only his guy can get it. And again, they move it down inside the 30. That's a good point, Timmy. Threw the ball away from the safety, Nate Allen, for that 19-yard gain. Halfback pass. No, I don't think so, according to Ben Moffitt. Guarantee you that's what they were trying to do. He was loaded up, wasn't he? He was. <laughs> they also, you know, running backs run differently when they're about to throw, too. <laughs> you <laughs> you <know>? think? <laughs> oh, my gracious. Stewart came that time, and it almost looked like he took a wide stance, and he just started moving his feet. I'm telling you. Watch him here. Oh, baby. He's loaded up, but at the same time, he's looking, and he sees Moffitt coming at him. Yeah, so he, he knew he was going to be tattooed. He, he's lucky he didn't fumble. Trying to get that ball into throwing position there. Big loss on the play of seven. That's done in motion. Cox with a quick throw out to McKenzie. McKenzie slips one, dives forward inside the 30-yard line. Good effort by the big tight end. Bruce Mom Premier made the tackle. You know, McKenzie caught the touchdown pass last week that locked the game three-yard touchdown catch. And we were talking to Tommy Tuberville, and he said Sunday he went into the office, and he said, why was McKenzie in there on a play we had to throw? Because they don't think of him as a great receiver. But he made a one-handed grab. He made two other catches. We saw him at practice pulling the ball in. He catches the ball just fine. And he's got seven catches on the season, three tonight, and he did catch a touchdown pass earlier. Third and 12. Cox to the end zone almost intercepted Ryan Gilliam almost picked that one off as Cox throws into coverage one more time and Gilliam knows he should have had it that was an interception and he wants that one back look how frustrated he is he did everything right but catch the football he's reading Cox reading him Reading him, breaks, here it is, steps in front, goes and gets it at his highest point, and it goes through his hands. Well, I would play zone defense against Brandon Cox all night long. Just sit back and watch his eyes. He's going to tell you where he's throwing the ball. That's Wes Byram. 
Matthew Motley will put it down. Robert Shiver will snap it back for this 46 yard attempt. And it hooks in. Good. Nice little power draw there by Wes Byram. You know, West replaced John Vaughn, who was a finalist for the Luke Rose Award last year. Auburn's all-time leading scorer. He steps in, and his first two weeks have just been phenomenal. Now, Tommy Tuberville said defense and special teams. This kick is very special. It looked like for a moment it was going to stay outside of the uprights and then just hooked right in. So he's made a 49er and a 46er. That's impressive. Now you go across the other side and you say South Florida's got a chance to win this football game. 254 left. Auburn has turned the ball over five times and yet are leading on the scoreboard with 254 to go and Matt Grothy has no timeouts to work with. No but that kid's a leader. He's a competitor. He understands the game and he knows what's left on that clock and the possibilities that exist. Zach Kutch will kick it for the Tigers to Jerome Murphy or Torres Johnson. They're standing at about the 10 yard line. Jerome Murphy coming left side. Jerome Murphy all the way to the 34 yard line. This is where that new rule comes into play kicking from the 30. Even if you stay in your lanes you've got so much room and so much distance to go you create space for the return guy. Now once he has it at this hash mark watch him try to even increase more space goes all the way to the other side of the field. He's got one to beat the contained man that came way too far inside then he breaks two tackles and almost took it to the house. If you're a little kid playing in your backyard now and you're Matt Wolfe you're saying Auburn I'm down three points 241 to go I can win this football game. Here's Grothy. Left side smartly gets out of bounds in front of Zach Etheridge. That was a 59 yard return and you know who got the key block for him that set him down the sidelines was tailback Benjamin Williams. Yeah they say Benji Williams when he watches the tapes he doesn't like to watch himself carry the ball he likes to see how many guys he can blow up. Grothy is in a situation I'm sure he thrives on he loves this. Grothy got about five and a half on that. Clock stopped at 2.35. Grothy, quick throw over the middle. He's got Johnson. Johnson inside the 10 yard line. Gerard Powers with the tackle there. Problem is, and this is going to sound silly, but the problem is they're going to score too quickly. Watch the bottom of the screen. You got Tripp's receivers. He just sits down on the other side of the first down marker, and Grothy hits him in stride, on time, in rhythm. Broke the tackle of Chris Evans. First down and goal. You got to like this kid, Dan. He's a gunslinger. Mike Ford is the tailback, and Ford's got it. Pounding that left side and not getting much. Josh Thompson, among others. And Mark Dial is down. You mentioned he was sick when we went to visit the team yesterday at the hotel. He was in there and he was regurgitating which really will dehydrate you and you come in a hot night when it's 80 some degrees in here it was 96 today. You know he's got to be somewhat dehydrated and he's holding now he's just hanging that left arm. Now good news for the Bulls Walter Walker's back in the game now Jared Carnes will go over to the left side to take Mark Dial's spot. Number 70. Grothy. Empty backfield blitz by Auburn throw to the outs almost oh. intercepted Mike McNeil almost picked that one off 
Patrick Lee rather McNeil was coming on the blitz. I think Patrick Lee was shocked because he was going left to cover the guy and the ball was going right but it looked like it was intended for Lee. Here comes the pressure they come with a the blitz they don't blitz often but when they do you know it. Now watch this. This ball is like it's thrown to Lee like it was intended for Lee and he overran it. Third and goal from the eight yard line. Five wide receivers for Grothy. Good catch on the snap. Quick throw. It's complete to Hester over the middle down to the one yard line. McNeil on the stop there. Now decision time for Jim Levitt. You got to go for the win. Well you have no timeouts left. You got 130 on the clock and it continues to run. Your field goal kickers miss four field goals. But don't take so much time that the play clock runs out here. You can't stop it. It's already down to 20 22 21 20. Jim Levitt's got to go. Down to he's going to take seconds. the penalty. He's going to take the penalty. Take the penalty. Bring out he's Delbert gonna, Alvarado. That's right. He's going to take the penalty and bring out the field goal kicker. And the, and the, the South Florida players are upset. Jim Levitt saying relax. Let's go. Let's go. Just tie it up right here. Been a tale of two kickers tonight. West Byram, two for two from 49 and 46. And the trials and travails of Delbert Alvarado, one for five, one blocked, two wide left. Yeah, and the, and the situation is the same as it was the last time. It's still in the hash mark on this side. It's going to be a tough angle. And even with the penalty, you know, it, 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 Auburn declines that, so that doesn't mean anything. Here he is. First one is left. He comes back with a field goal that is shanked and is even further left and almost out of the end zone. And then he has one blocked and finally he splits the sticks. They're trying to give him a check up from the neck up and get rid of that stinking thinking, but he's got a tough <laughs> angle here, I'm telling you. He missed from 21 yards out the last time, just barely outside the left upright. And if you're playing defense, beware of the fake. This one from 19 yards out. This is the ball game. This will tie it or it will be the ball game. Severino to put it down. Alvarado's got it. Tie ball game. Delbert Alvarado from 19 yards out. Don't go to bed yet folks. We've got 55 seconds left and we're tied at 20. Jim Levitt continues to build this program. He said he wants to be able to be mentioned in the same paragraph with Miami and Florida State and Florida. He wins here tonight. He'll be doing that. He beat Louisville two years ago, went up to Morgantown, beat seventh ranked West Virginia last year. Alvarado over there in the corner praying. <laughs> he knows he may have to kick another field goal before the <laughs> night's out. I'd be praying too. Don't celebrate yes folks come on. Ben Tate and Mario Fannin are deep for the Tigers. You're on the kickoff team you got to stay, stay in your lanes. If you're on the receiving end right there you've got to get as much as you possibly can. Well, Tichi kicks it away. And that's Fannin. Across the 30. Fannin knocked out of bounds at the 37 yard line. And he held on to the ball. So now Brandon Cox has two timeouts and 49 seconds to work with to get it down in field goal range. And that's the key because he has a solid kicker tonight in West Byram has hit from 49 yards and from 46 yards just moments ago. The 49 yarder of course was a career long. But first things first here's Cox. A lot of time to throw now to. Tommy Trot too far out of bounds. Good coverage by Nate Allen. No, and that's a good play by Cox too. Some of his best passes are incompletions, and I mean that seriously. Everybody was covered. He had wasted a lot of time back there. Just throw it out of bounds. So he throws it away, gives him another play at second and ten. Sideline is your friend now. You move the change, you stop the clock. You've got 42 seconds to go. You can't waste too much time. Thirty six yard line for the second and ten four man rush by the Bulls 
Cox avoids the first guy, but not the second. You need a timeout here. Got away from Jared Bowie. And then Aaron Harris wrapped him up. You're down to 29 seconds. You need a timeout. He's not taking one. He's got two left. Now yeah, he believes he'd win with defense and special teams. And, and he's going to let this go. Oh, boy. You got, are coming out. I, I don't know. You've got a strong leg in your kicker. You've got to use those sidelines in the passing game to get down in the field goal range. He's playing for overtime. And these fans don't like it one bit. He just gave South Florida an even playing field again. Well, they get time to rest. Time to rest and start over a whole new period. So we got a tie game here in Auburn, Alabama. South Florida 20, Auburn 20. When we come back, we'll have overtime. Back at Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. We're going to overtime. South Florida 20, Auburn 20. Tommy Tuberville electing to run the clock out to set up this overtime. But if this game comes down to a field goal, I think Auburn has a distinct advantage. First and 10 for the Tigers. Tate gets the ball left side and he'll get two or three. Nate Allen coming up quickly along with Bruce Montpremier. Thing is about overtime, you cannot think about being in an overtime situation. You have to play just as hard, look at the situations the same as if you're playing at the end of the fourth quarter. Now, yeah, real advantage for the team that wins the toss, they go on defense, they know what they have to do when they get the ball on offense. Well, that's true, but my point is you can't put more added pressure on you. Tommy Trot is in motion. Fake to Tate. Pass to Trot and he drops the ball. He had running room too along that left side. What did he ever? But Selby with great pressure on the quarterback forced that quick throw. Tommy Trot's one of those 250 pound guys and the ball was a little bit high and a little bit behind him and he tried to twist and the big body wouldn't allow it. Watch five slip out. Here comes the ball. It's a little bit high and he's just fighting it. Boy, he had. All the room you wanted out there. He's too big to wear number five. <laughs> Here's third and long. Yes, it is. Third and eight. From the shotgun. Cox. Over the middle, incomplete. Robert Dunn never had a shot at it. No, but a well-thrown ball has that inside the five, maybe even a score because he was open. He was between the corner and the safety. Carlton Williams, number 32, perhaps distracted. Well, Cox read the safety. He just had to fit that thing in there. Williams was late coming over. Good read, poor execution. Well, this is a big field goal by West Byram of 40 yards. And, and again, our, he's hit from 49 and 46. And there's our man, Matthew Motley, to put it down. Low kick. Good. Oh, my. He just bangs him in there, doesn't he? That was just power. He missed the ball and still got it there. He hit the top half of this ball, I That's think. what I mean. He hit it on the hosel, and he still got it through. Look at this thing. They're going to call it officially a 39-yarder, but it is three points for the Tigers. So the Bulls know they need a touchdown. They can win this ball game. Key thing here, though, for the Bulls is not take a sack. They take a sack. They really put their field goal kicker in a very tough situation. Not only a sack, no negative yardage. First and 10 from the 25 for Grothy. Mike Ford, fake to Ford. Grothy's got it. He's got three yards on that left side. Ryan Schmidt now, the left guard, comes up lifting. He's in pain. Yeah, but Mark Dial's back in the game, as is Walter Walker. Keep in mind, they're playing without their starting center. Kapagna injured his knee. Griffin's taking his place. Dial went out and came back, and now Schmidt has cramps. Three yards for Grothy. Again, the fake to Ford. Grothy's got it. He's got about four this time. Same play.
We're in overtime. Auburn up by three. Jim Levitt agonizing on the sidelines. He knows he may have a tough decision to make real soon. Well, they kept the ball in the middle of the field. That's a positive. Let's see if they can get the first. This time he gives it to Ford. And Ford is close to a first down. Oh, I don't know if he got a good mark. He's going to be short where they marked it. Remember, that yellow line is unofficial. He had to get to the 15-yard line. The line judge, Terry Walters, came in quickly and said he comes up just a bit short. Watch where the ball is when he hits. Oh, and then watch where the mark is. I tell you, they ought to review that one, I think. Every play is supposedly reviewed. They're going for it here. Here's ball game right here. Fourth and inches. Grothy will go under center. Quarterback sneak. He's got the first down. Matt Grothy with a huge play on the quarterback sneak. Want to submarine the center because you know the quarterback sneak is coming. Auburn's defensive line came high. That's where you want to get as low as you can and knife into the gap, create a line of scrimmage a yard deep in South Florida's. And, uh, but here he pushes forward, so South Florida's still alive. Give Jake Griffin, Zach Herman, and Ryan Schmidt a lot of credit for that first down. Fake to Ford. Grothy's got it again. Cuts back and only picks up one yard. Surprised he's not throwing for the end zone. And the guy I'd be looking for is Amari Jackson. And again, I reiterate, he's 6'5, going against 5'9 corners. Just put it up there and let him go up for it. No game on the play. Second down, 10. Right in front of the student section. And they're doing their best to make it tough on Matt Grothy. Here he is right here. 6'5 guy. Grothy throws the other way. Got it. He's got a touchdown, South Florida, and the Bulls upset Auburn. Jesse Hester with a touchdown reception from Matt Grothy from 14 yards out, and the Bulls are going crazy. Jesse Hester Jr. with his first career touchdown, and I bet his daddy is doing somersaults right now. First of all, he had great protection. Secondly, Hester beat the safety Brock, who was late coming over. The ball was perfectly thrown. I think Auburn was looking for Amari Jackson as well. They knew he was on the other side. They almost used him as a decoy. Donnie. Well, five, you wouldn't know it, but Coach Levitt's a pretty happy man right now, Coach. When Delbert missed that last field goal, yeah. what did you tell him when he came out the field? Well, you know that he's got to keep his head up because he knew he's going to have to kick a figure that could win the game for us. When you had that fourth and one, what was the play call and what did you tell him, Matt? What was the last bit of instruction you gave him? Oh, you mean right in here on the quarterback sneak? Well, we were going to go for it a few inches. I, I didn't think the spot was well. We, we, I didn't want to put it in the hands of Delbert and that one for the 18, so we, we were going to attack, quarterback sneak it. Down here when you went for the tie instead of going for the win there, what did you tell your players? Because a lot of them really wanted to go for the win there. I had a tough decision. Uh, and, and uh, you know, you, it's just a gut feeling. You just go, it was a tough angle. But, you know, I just, I went, I went for the you know, overtime. You know, I don't know. We talked to you the other night about how big this game was. How big of a win is this for the University of South Florida program? Uh, it is, it's huge for the Big East. Certainly, it's huge for University of South Florida. It's, it's great for the uh, city of Tampa, that's for sure. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you very much. Dan? Thank you, Todd. A signature win for the program, a win over a ranked non-conference team. USF 5-0 in overtime now. Our final score, USF 26, Auburn 23 in overtime. For Tim Brant and Todd Harris, I'm Dan Fouts. Good night, everybody.